if you just bought a camera like this or are planning to buy a camera like this, you need to watch this video. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. So today, we are doing a video that I am super excited about, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, and that is a video all about camera settings when you're using a professional grade camera, like this one instead of something like a webcam. When you got a camera like this, you need to know how to set the settings or it's gonna end up looking like a regular webcam. So we're gonna be doing a video all about the settings on this. You guys know I'm good at After Effects and editing, everyone thinks I'm an After Effects genius and After Effects god, but I also know my way around cameras. I'm just a general filmmaker and I know everything about cameras and all the camera settings. So I want to share that with you guys so that you guys can be getting the best looking footage out of your cameras if you choose to buy one like this. So let me paint a picture for you guys. You wanted to start streaming and making YouTube videos. So you went out and bought a webcam like this one, the Logitech C920. But as your stream started to grow, maybe you started to make a little bit of money, you realize that the quality of this isn't that great. So you're starting to look into professional grade cameras. Well, first off, before you do that, just make sure you have proper lighting. Right now, there's no lights on in my room, and this is what a Logitech C920 looks like. But if we turn on a couple lights, it looks like this. This is just three lights that I turned on, and really the only light that's changing the quality of the camera is this one right in front of me. The other two, the pink one and the blue one, are just to make the background look a little bit more stylized. But this is what your webcam can look like if you just invest in lighting before you invest in a camera. And your camera, even if you get a professional grade DSLR or mirrorless, is also going to need lighting. So make sure you're upgrading your lighting before you get your camera. But let's say you do have lighting similar to this, and you still have a webcam, and you still think that this quality is not good enough for you. So you go out and you buy a Canon M50 or any other camera. You're so excited, you unbox the camera, you throw away your old webcam, hook it up to your tripod, you fire it up, and you're greeted with this. This is the Canon M50 in the same exact lighting conditions as the webcam we just looked at. And if you plugged in your camera and it looked like this, I would be pissed as well. You'd feel like you just wasted all your money. This doesn't even look better than the webcam. I would probably take the webcam picture over this. This looks like garbage, but this is what it looks like when you let the camera control your settings. This is the kind of stuff it'll do to your image. This looks absolutely terrible. And if you just take the time to learn a few settings that I'm gonna teach you here in a second, it can look so much better, guys. So I'm gonna take the M50 right now off the tripod. I'm going to change, I believe, three or four settings. Yeah, three settings and we're gonna see what it looks like. All right, and there we go. This is still the M50, exact same camera, exact same lighting setup. All that changed is three simple settings inside of the camera. And once you know these settings, you can have an image that looks like this instead of the garbage before this. Now this is an upgrade above a webcam. And this is what you're expecting when you buy an M50 or any kind of DSLR or mirrorless camera. So let's go over the settings so you can have a better looking video. First things first, take it off of auto put it on manual controls. If you are vlogging and if you are out and about and moving around, sure, you can put it on auto when the lighting's changing a bunch. The camera's probably gonna do a pretty good job of just getting a shot that's usable. That's what auto is for. If you're going from inside to outside and you can't be changing settings, yeah, sure, switch it to auto. If it's a little noisy, who cares? It's it's getting the point across. But when you're doing a lockdown shot like this, where you've got studio lighting, nothing's changing, take it off of auto and put it on manual and just change a couple settings. And these are the settings you need to know. So first off, you need to choose your frame rate, whether you wanna shoot at 24 to make it look cinematic or 30 to be like a regular video or 60 to have that smooth look like this. I shoot all my videos in 60. You just gotta choose your frame rate and just know it's not going to say 24, 30 or 60. It's going to be a decimal that's close like 59.94 or 23.976. And just know that that decimal means 24, 30, or 60. There's a broadcast reason why there's decimals instead of just a set frame rate, but that's for another video. So just choose whatever you want. I shoot all my videos in 60, and that is going to set what your shutter speed needs to be. Now your shutter speed, 
you're going to see on the camera is going to be a fraction. It's going to say something like 1 over 50, 1 over 60, 1 over 25, something like that. Your shutter speed needs to be double what your frame rate is or as close as you can get to double. And this will give you the proper motion blur when you're moving around and whatnot. If you do not have it set at double, you're going to either get something that's got too much motion blur or something that's looking choppy with no motion blur. Now you can change your shutter speed if you really need to adjust some lighting, but normally your shutter speed should be double what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, try to get it one over 60. And some cameras can't do that. So maybe one over 50 is the closest you can get. So do that. Or if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, do one over 120. Or like the Canon M50, it can only do one over 125. So if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, make sure you're at one over 125. So just double your frame rate with your shutter speed. And that's how you get the best looking motion blur. Next up, we're gonna talk about your aperture. Your aperture has to do with your lens. It's how wide open your lens is or how closed down your lens is. The more wide open, the more light you're letting in, the more closed down, the less light you're letting in. This is one of the things you can adjust if you need to brighten or darken up the exposure of your shot. But what most people are going for when they buy one of these cameras, a mirrorless camera or DSLR, is that typical DSLR look. And what people mean when they say that DSLR look is depth of field, a blurry background behind them. And what you want is a low aperture. So the Canon M50 with the kit lens will go down to, I believe, f3.5. The f means f-stop, f-stop aperture, same thing. So the lower number your aperture is, the blurrier your background's going to be. And I know that's what most people care about. So that's all I'm going to tell you. There's a lot more that goes in to having your aperture low or high. There's much more. Re there's a lot of other reasons why you should have a high aperture versus a low aperture. But all you guys need to know for all you people up there that are obsessed with the DSLR look, just know the lower your aperture, the lower the number, the blurrier the background, the higher the number, the more everything's in focus. You're in focus, the background's in focus. So just keep a low aperture if you want that DSLR look. And finally, we're talking about ISO. Now, ISO is the number that is going to kill you and annoy you. And the reason is because ISO is the main number you're going to need to adjust if you need to brighten or darken your exposure. But here's the issue, every camera, even the M50, every camera out there has a native ISO. You can type it into Google, your camera model and native ISO, and it shouldn't be too hard to find what the native ISO is for this camera. And what that means, it is the number, the ISO number that's going to give the cleanest image out of this camera. So this one, I'm guessing, I haven't looked it up, is probably around 400. So at ISO 400, this would be giving you the cleanest possible image. And as you go up past native ISO, as you continue to go up, your your shot is gonna get noisier and noisier. And if you have to crank it all the way up, it's gonna start looking terrible like a webcam. That was the issue in that first clip that you saw of the M50. And that's the issue with webcams as webcams love to crank settings like that to get a bright shot and you get a ton of noise. So you need to try to keep your ISO down as close as possible to like 400, 800 in that range to get the cleanest looking shot. And if it goes up past like 1600, 3200, that's when you're gonna start seeing a ton of noise in your shot. So make sure you're keeping your ISO as low as possible on these cameras. When it comes to my camera, such as a cinema camera, you can kind of start to go higher before you start getting a noisy image. But on DSLRs and smaller cameras like this, the ISO will kill you if you start going past like 1600 or 3200. It's crazy how noisy a shot can start looking when your ISO goes up. So it's going to be very annoying when you have to crank that ISO, but sometimes you got to do it to get the shot. And I know I said finally for the ISO setting, but there is one one more setting I want to talk about it has nothing to do with your exposure and that is your white balance. If you are sitting in a normal location like this where nothing's changing, I would recommend setting your white balance. There's plenty of ways to do it. You can look up videos on how to set your white balance and get a nice set white balance so that nothing's changing. But when you're vlogging, I have no problem with setting an auto white balance. Your camera is going to be in all different kinds of lighting conditions and it's going to want to adjust that automatically. And you don't want to walk into a room and have a really orange or blue face because you missed your white balance. So if you're vlogging, sure, set it to an auto white balance but if you're doing a talking head like this just a regular shot in a studio environment make sure you set your white balance to a set number or a set preset so that you're not getting colors changing as you're shooting but uh that yeah that's just a little extra setting tip all right guys that is pretty much it i hope you enjoyed the video i know there's a lot of information and there's uh, so much to remember but if you have a camera like this just have it in front of you play and pause as you go through the video and just change the settings as you go and it'll be really easy i promise if you don't have a 
camera and you're just trying to remember it all for when you get a camera, make sure you're taking notes or get the camera and then just come back to the video and adjust the settings and kind of learn it as you go while watching the video that I just provided for you. But if you did just buy a camera like this, guys, congratulations. I hope you love it. Enjoy making videos. They can be annoying as hell sometimes, but they can produce some incredible videos and I'm so excited to see what you guys do with it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.